Hello everyone! Today I thought we'd talk about some of the basics of one of my favorite photography methods, scanography. This process is a super beginner-friendly cameraless photography technique involving found objects, a scanner bed, and a computer with scanning software, which usually comes with the scanner or printer itself. In high school, I took my first formal photography class, an introduction to film photography. One of the first projects that I remember us doing was creating photograms. These were cameraless photographic images created by placing objects onto a light sensitive paper and exposing the surface. The effect reflects the shadows of objects onto the paper and creates a transparent, ghostly feeling. I love this project and the uncertainty of how the images would come out depending on the objects, the exposure time, and other factors. My wife and I actually have our first photograms that we created in two different film photography classes hanging side by side. Fast forward about five years, I was exposed to the basics of scanography in a college level printmaking class. We used an office copier to scan objects, ourselves, images, and create digital collages that we then printed onto tiny booklets. The term scanography wasn't mentioned at the time, but I became fascinated with this technique and the level of detail that the scanner was able to capture. Today I use scanography to capture Sonoran Desert botanicals as the seasons change throughout the year. As an homage to photograms, I like to call these images scanograms. Most of these I process similarly to typical photography. I select my subject matter, I create a scene, photograph the piece, and mildly edit the photographs in Lightroom. Sometimes I'll create composite photographs that overlap the images, twisting and contorting the images into new shapes and scenes that I wasn't able to capture on the scanner bed. I love this process because the way that scanners capture 3D objects makes them appear as if they're floating in space or trapped under a sheet of thin, clear ice. It's also incredibly fun to use for self-portraits. While photograms have been around since the 1800s, scanography, also known as scanner photography or scanner art, didn't mature until the mid-20th century. Scanography began more as a form of Xerox art in the 1960s in which artists used photocopiers to capture and print their work in a single step. It wasn't until the early 2000s that it became popular and used more extensively in artistic practices, most likely due to the spread of computer usage. Although this practice is still relatively underground compared to other methods of cameraless photography like cyanotypes. Ultimately, scanography is the process of capturing images using a flatbed scanner, either a CCD or a charged coupled device, or a CIS, a contact image sensor. Many fine art scanographers use photographic flatbed scanners, but you can get started with whatever you have, including the scanner bed attached to your at-home printer. The main tools that I use in scanography are my scanner bed, computer, glass cleaner, and a cloth. I just use a mixture of vinegar and water and objects to scan. Before I purchase my Epson Perfection V39 scanner, I just use the scanner bed attached to my Epson printer, which worked great. I honestly haven't noticed much of a difference in quality between the two, but I prefer to use this one due to its portability. You can also have some tools handy to move objects without touching the scanner bed with your fingers and running the risk of creating fingerprints on the glass like cotton swabs, toothpicks, and chopsticks. I like keeping my compositions relatively simple by using flowers, plants, and natural objects around me placed delicately on the scanner and then exposing them in a dark room to create a black background. However, you can play around with layering objects above the scanner bed using clips and other mechanisms to hold the objects or placing transparent objects like mylar, lace, rice paper, tissue paper, or plastic wrap before other solid objects. I've seen some photographers use bubbles in the same way that ceramicists use bubbles in their glazing processes with some really cool results. Some photographers use their hands, faces, and collage elements like magazine and newspaper cutouts in addition to 3D objects. You can also shine at an angle and a ways away from the scanner bed different colored lights into the room to see if the scanner picks up those colors as a background. To get started, I recommend finding interesting objects throughout your home or surrounding area and just scanning them to see how they turn out. However, I do recommend if you're going to use water or some form of liquid that might have a chance of leaking into your scanner that you use a clear caulk or clear tape to seal the edges of your scanner glass. 
This will help prevent anything from getting into the mechanisms of your scanner or creating condensation on the inside of the glass. You'll lose a little bit of image capturing space, but it's definitely worth it to protect your equipment. Also, keep in mind that the depth of field or the distance before objects begin to get blurry is very shallow. Objects set more than half an inch above the scanner bed will become blurry very quickly. This is one of the unique aspects of scanography, but can also create a lot of trial and error when placing objects on the scanner bed. Each scanner will have different scanning software included in it. However, most of these will include options to adjust the exposure through gamma, contrast, and other features before scanning. I'd play around with these until you get the look that you want. I like to run a preview scan before taking the real image. I like to think of this as looking through a viewfinder on a camera before pressing the shutter button. This takes a quick preview of the image before capturing the full image at regular speed and allows you to check placement and composition. Depending on the objects that you're photographing, you might need to clean the scanner bed every few or every photograph to remove dust, dog hair, pollen, or other items that have fallen onto the scanner bed. I recommend cleaning this similar to how you would clean a TV screen by spraying the glass cleaner or vinegar water solution onto a microfiber cloth or eyeglass cloth and then wiping the glass. This helps prevent any water from sneaking into the scanner bed mechanisms under the glass. To ensure that you capture the max amount of detail for printing without the scan also taking forever, I recommend setting your DPI or dots per inch in your scanner software to between 300 and 600. This sets the resolution of the image and prevents the image from being too grainy. Setting it to 300 will allow you to print the image at the same size as the scanner bed. Doubling this to 600 will allow you to enlarge the image two times in size while keeping the same 300 DPI resolution. Now that you have a set of scanography photographs that you've taken, you can edit these to your heart's content. I like to use Adobe Lightroom because I'm familiar with it, but you could use GIMP or other free photo editing software to get started. One of the main things that you will likely need to do is adjust the contrast colors and use a healing brush to remove streaks, rogue dust and dog hair, and other imperfections from the image. However, you can also opt to leave these in if your theme is a more gritty alternative vibe. I've decided to leave the tiny dust flecks in some of my work since they kind of remind me of stars. This is entirely a personal preference and completely up to you. The limitations of editing your work are similar to photographs taken with a traditional camera and are fairly limitless. Sometimes after I edit the individual photos in Lightroom, I'll pull them into Photoshop to create composite photos and play around with the additional layering, blending modes, and new compositions. I hope this video inspired you to try scanography if you've never tried or heard of it before. If you give it a go, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below on how it went and what subject matter you played with. Questions are also always welcome. If you use scanography as part of your photographic process or as your sole form of photography, let me know in the comments below if there's anything that you do differently in your own practice. Every scanographer seems to have such a different process. I'd love to see what you do.